Okay, so the point of the efficiency test on the compressor is to assess firstly whether or not you have a leak through the reed valves on the valve plate of this compressor, as well as you also want to check whether or not your service valves are working correctly and that they are actually sealing at the exit point and entry point. This is a suction line, so this is the entry point of the service valve, and you want to make sure that it's not leaking through there when you front seat that valve. The same applies to the discharge valve, where as it exits here, you want to make sure that this valve actually seals at this point when you front seat this valve. So there are th three things we're looking for. Number one, does this compressor leak through the reed valves? Number two, does it actually seal on the front seat of the service valve on both the suction and discharge valves? The first thing we're gonna have to do here is We'll have to pump the system down. Now, the standard procedure is to pump the system down into the liquid receiver, but for the sake of this test, we are actually going to front seat the suction valve so that there actually is still some pressure at this point so that we can do the test whether or not the gas is coming through that valve there. The same is going to apply to the discharge valve. So the first thing we're going to do, I'm just gonna run you through the, the steps just broadly at first. We're gonna front seat the suction valve. We're going to pump the system down. Once the system is pumped down, we're gonna assess how deeply this compressor can actually pull into vacuum. So if you look at the actual service manifold, for the sake of this test, we're going to use a analog manifold. You want to make sure that this compressor can actually pull down to at least 60 KPA below zero. That is the standard test mark and the standard pass mark for this compressor during the trade test. So as we're pumping down, we want to watch this needle and we want to make sure whether or not it can come all the way down to 60 below zero. Um, that's obviously in terms of KPA. Um, that's gonna be the first thing we're going to check, whether or not she pumps all the way down um, into vacuum and a deep enough vacuum, which is 60 below zero. The second thing we're going to do as these valves are isolated or the compressors isolated from the rest of the system, we're going to assess whether or not the pressure at this point is increasing and whether the pressure at that point, which is the discharge valve, is decreasing. So you should have a zero pressure over here or just below zero. And then at the discharge valve, we should have a considerably higher pressure and the question being whether or not those two pressures equalize out. If those two pressures equalize, then you know you have a leak on the reed valves of this compressor. And if, for example, you have a situation where the pressure at your discharge valve um, stays high, but the pressure on your suction valve also increases, that would mean that you've actually got a leak through this port here. So for now, I'm gonna run you through the steps one at a time, and we're gonna check this compressor one step at a time to see if she is actually passing an efficiency test. First step is gonna be like I said, we're gonna pump this system down by front seating that valve. Okay. Now, as you can see, we've managed to front seat the service valve on the suction side, that's your suction service valve. She's been front seated, so that's your first step complete. The next thing we have to do is we actually have to attach the high side gauge to your discharge line. She isn't currently attached here because, as I mentioned before, prior to starting this test, you will be asked to measure the system's readings, your high pressure reading, your low pressure reading, those type of things you'll be required to take those readings. And because I had the discharge line attached to the liquid line at the receiver, I now have to move it over to the actual discharge port at the compressor so that we can do the actual efficiency test on the compressor. Remember again, worthwhile mentioning that right at the beginning of this task in the trade test, you'll be required to mark down the measurements, your suction line, um, running pressures, running settings, um, 
your high pressure settings, your low pressure settings, as well as your running pressures um, prior to testing the efficiency of the compressor, because you will be required at the end of the test to remark those um, measurements and to see if the compressor is still maintaining those uh, parameters. So next step here is going to be to put my gauges onto the discharge line of the compressor. Okay, as you can see, we've attached the high side line to the discharge valve on the compressor. So we are ready to test this compressor. Just to reiterate again, as you see over here, at this stage, suction line service valve is front seated and your discharge uh, service valve is in a cracked position, which means we've actually got pressure on this discharge line, which is further confirmed by looking at the gauges. So now the next step is going to be to pump the system down. All right, so with the system now pressurized and the gauges pressurized, we are basically going to pump the system down and see how far down this compressor can actually pull the system into vacuum. Well, as you can see there, um, the compression is quite comfortably and within a minute she is pulled all the way down to um, 60 kPa below zero. Um, yeah, I'm quite happy that she she's pulling into vacuum nicely. So the next step is going to be to close the service valve on the discharge side um, and then just check if she's leaking across the retards. But I'm very happy that that is reached 60 below zero, so she is pumping down quite nicely. Um, and like I said, the next step is going to be to front seat the service valve on the discharge line to make sure that she actually holds across the reed valves. All right, so as you can see, we have front seated the service valve on the discharge line, which means that the pressures that you're reading from there and over there now is going to be the pressure in the system. So the high side gauge pressure is basically going to be what you're finding on the one end of the valve plate and the low side pressure is the pressure on the other side of the valve plate in the, in the low side chamber. So at this point, we want to see whether or not we are going to get the migration of refrigerant from the high side through to the low side on the actual valve plate and in the chamber of the compressor. Um, so this test again to reiterate is to check whether or not we're going to get gas leaking through the actual reed valves going through the valve plate from the high side to the low side of the compressor. Yeah, as you can see, immediately as we've isolated the system, there's an immediate drop in the pressure at the discharge valve and the pressure at the suction valve is simultaneously rising which confirms quite spectacularly that there is a leak quite a big leak through the reed valves of this compressor so immediately there the compressor has failed the efficiency test due to a leak at the reed valves it's it's very obviously if you look at if you look at these gauge pressures, it's very obviously equalizing through the reed valve. So this compressor would fail the efficiency test on the basis that it's leaking refrigerant through the reed valves. Yes, well there you can see it. Um, once we open the discharge service valve, there's an immediate rise in pressure on the high side, which obviously would happen because we're letting refrigerant from the system come back into, into the, the, the discharge valve. So we've effectively opened that section up. 
so we'll get refrigerant coming back from the system and that's why this pressure which is the pressure over here has gone up but simultaneously the pressure at the suction side of the compressor is also going up despite the fact that the valve is still sealed so what that is saying to you is that as the pressure on this line has come back to the discharge valve it has gone through the reed valves and in turn has raised the pressure on the suction side which is pretty evident over here so that's just double confirmed that this compressor absolutely has a leak through the reed valves on the valve plate and therefore this compressor has failed the efficiency test